Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial series on the topic of kinematics. The topic of this video is describing freefall motion. The questions we wish to answer are, what is freefall or freefalling motion? How can you describe the position, velocity, and acceleration of an object during the course of a freefall motion? And how can you predict the velocity of an object at any given instant in time? Let's get started. So what is freefall? A free-falling object is an object that is fall, falling under the sole influence of gravity. If there's air resistance, it's so small, it has a negligible effect upon the object such that we could say gravity is the only force of influence. Free-falling objects could be moving downwards like this object, or they could be moving upwards and then subsequently falling downwards like this object. They even can have a horizontal motion amidst their falling motion. Whatever the case is, free-falling objects are objects under the sole influence of gravity. A free-falling object accelerates, that is, it changes its velocity. You can see by this dot diagram of an object that's thrown upwards that as it travels upwards, it's slowing down. It reaches a highest position known as the peak, and as it falls, it speeds up. Both types of motion, the rising upwards and slowing down, and the falling downwards and speeding up, are described as being a downwards acceleration. Whenever you notice an object slows down, the direction of its acceleration is the opposite of the direction it moves, and whenever it speeds up, the direction is in the same direction that it moves. A free-falling object accelerates, that is, it changes its velocity. An acceleration is a vector that has a magnitude and a direction. We've discussed its direction. Now for the magnitude. The magnitude of an acceleration of a free-falling object is 9.8 meters per second squared. This value is known as the acceleration of gravity or the acceleration caused by gravity. The value itself does not depend upon the mass of the object, the direction it's traveling, or the speed at which it's traveling. It's a fixed constant of 9.8 meters per second squared on Earth. As you see in this animation of the elephant and the feather, if left to free fall, both objects would free fall at that same rate of 9.8 meters per second squared. Mass has no effect on the acceleration caused by gravity. Now let's talk about several representations of a free-falling object. We see right here a dot diagram representing just strictly the falling motion of an object. We notice the dot spacing increases as the object continues to fall. Here we notice a velocity timetable, and in that velocity timetable we're showing the, t the velocity at one second intervals in time. And one thing that you notice is that the velocity is increasing by 9.8 meters per second in the negative direction each consecutive second. And finally, here's a velocity time graph for a free-falling object. If you look at the graph, you'll notice it's a linear graph, meaning that there's a constant acceleration value. And the slope of the line is the acceleration, and it happens to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And now let's look at some representations of an up and down motion for an object that's thrown from the ground level upwards that rises upwards and then falls back downwards. Here we see a dot diagram representation. And in the dot diagram, what we notice is as the ball rises, the dot spacing is decreasing. It reaches its peak, and as it falls from its peak, its dot spacing increases. And here's a velocity timetable of a free-falling object. We notice at a time of zero, it's got an initial velocity was because it was thrown upwards from the ground. But over the course of time, this velocity is decreasing by negative by 9.8 meters per second each second of motion until at three seconds it's finally reached its highest peak and at that point it begins to acquire a negative velocity once more increasing by 9.8 meters per second in the negative direction each consecutive second and finally here's a velocity time graph for an up and down motion you'll notice that the line starts high on the graph in the positive region and as it continues to, to move for the first three seconds we notice that the velocity is decreasing to a value of zero, after which point it begins to increase in the negative direction, acquiring greater and greater negative values of velocity. If we look at the slope of this line, it's negative 9.8 meters per second per second. 
Now we're going to look at more representations, but this time we're going to look at vector diagrams, velocity vector diagrams, and acceleration vector diagrams. First, the velocity vector diagrams for a strictly falling motion. You'll notice here that the arrow size is increasing over the course of time. You notice it points always downwards. This indicates that the velocity is increasing as the object falls, and the velocity is directed downwards at all points in time. Now let's consider acceleration. Here we see the acceleration vector on the object and we notice that the size of the arrow never changes because the acceleration value is constant. We also notice that it's directed downwards at all points in time. Now let's look at an up and down motion. So the ball is thrown upwards from the ground and the velocity changes over the course of time. What we notice is during the rising motion, the velocity arrow is decreasing, indicating that the object is slowing down. And during the falling motion, the velocity arrow is increasing, indicating that the object is speeding up. The direction of this velocity vector is always in the direction that the object moves. So it's upwards as it rises and downwards as it falls. Now when we look at an acceleration vector diagram, we get a different story altogether. What we notice is that the arrow is always of the same size and always directed downwards. So as the object rises, it has a downwards acceleration. And as it falls, it also has a downwards acceleration. The direction of the acceleration is downwards, and it's a constant value. In fact, we've described it to be 9.8 meters per second squared in the downwards direction. So these bullet points represent a summary of free fall motion. First, we can say some things about acceleration. The direction of acceleration is downwards, and the value of acceleration is 9.8 meters per second per second. Then we can say some things about the velocity. Because the object's accelerating, we can say that the velocity is changing, and in fact, it's changing by a negative 9.8 meters per second each one second of travel. As the object rises, it slows down, and as the object falls, it speeds up. The direction of this velocity vector is always in the direction it moves, so it's upward as the object's rising, and it's downwards as the object falls. So we've learned that on Earth, objects accelerate downwards at 9.8 meters per second per second. Now this value is approximately 10 meters per second per second. So we often approximate the free fall acceleration to be negative 10 meters per second each second. So as we look at this diagram of a ball thrown upwards, points during its trajectory at one second intervals of time are marked and they're labeled with a letter and we're given a table in which we list the velocity values of this object. Since the points are for one second intervals of time, naturally they will change their velocity between points by negative 10 meters per second. So we can approximate that if a ball is thrown upwards with a velocity of positive 40 meters per second, it will take approximately four seconds for it to lose all of that upwards velocity and reach a velocity of zero. That's point E on the diagram and point E on the table. It took four seconds to rise upwards, and you'll notice it takes four seconds to rise to fall back downwards to point I on the diagram, at which time the velocity is 40 meters per second in the downwards direction. This approximation that the acceleration of gravity is negative 10 meters per second per second comes in quite handy to make quick back of the envelope style calculations. Now here's the same diagram and data table that we just saw for an up and down motion of an object thrown upwards at 40 meters per second. Now what we notice is a number of numerical patterns in the data. First of all, the speed at the highest point, point E, is zero meters per second. That will always be the case for up and down motion. Second, for any two points at the same height, for example, point C and G, or point B and H, or point D and F, the speed of the object is the same. They have the same velocity value, just simply a different direction. Third, the speed is greatest for the lowest points, like A and I, and they're smallest for the highest point, the extreme of which is E, and D and F being the second highest points. Fourth, we observe that the time it takes to rise to the peak is equal to the time it takes to fall to the peak. The peak is point E on the diagram, and it takes four seconds to rise up to that peak, and four seconds to fall from point E down to I. And then finally, the time to the peak is the initial velocity at point A divided by 10 
or to be exact, 9.8. That is the time up equal V initial divided by 10. Well, now it's your turn to practice. A textbook is dropped from the second story stairs and free falls to the ground. What changes, if any, would be observed at the velocity and acceleration of the textbook as it falls? So here's six statements about the velocity and acceleration of the textbook, and only two of them are true. Why don't you find the two? Pause the video, do your decision making, and when you're ready, press play, and we'll see how you did. Okay, let's see if you got this stuff. The two true statements are, first, that the velocity is increasing as that textbook falls, and the second true statement is that the acceleration remains a constant value. It's your lucky day. You get a second practice problem. Here we see a trajectory of the ball thrown upwards from the ground, and the dots represent the location of the ball at one second intervals of time. You have to use the acceleration value approximated to be 10 meters per second squared down in order to determine about how much time is this ball in the air, what's its initial speed like at point A, and at what points is the object moving slower than it is at point B. So why don't you pause the video, come up with answers to these three questions, and when ready, press play. We'll see how you did. Okay, well here's our answers. If we can count the, num the, the seconds starting at a time of zero, position A. It takes three seconds to rise upward to point D and three seconds to fall back downwards to point G. And so it's in the air for six seconds and that's just a simple matter of counting the dots. Now, the second question, what is the initial speed at point A, demands that you use this approximation of 10 meters per second per second as the acceleration. What we know is point D is the highest point, and it took three seconds to get there. And during that three seconds, the object's losing 10 meters per second of velocity each second of time. And so if it took three seconds to get there, it must have started out with an original velocity of 30 meters per second upwards. And so that's the answer to the second question. Now if we ask, at what points is the object moving slower than it is at point B, I can employ the principle that it slows down as it rises and it speeds up as it falls. And so that means it's the higher positions on the diagram that have the slower speeds. And so we would pick positions C, D, and E being positions where the object's moving slower than it is at point B. Hope you did okay on that. Well, we've done it. We figured out what free fall is, and we figured out how the position, velocity, and acceleration can be described over the course of time. And finally, we figured out how to use an approximation to approximate the value of the velocity for every one second intervals of time. It's at this point in every video, I like to give you an action plan, a way of helping you out. A series of next steps is what you can do in order to make the learning stick. But before I help you out with that action plan, I was wondering if you could help us out. First of all, if you like the video, could you press on the like button down below? Second, if you like the video, maybe you'd like to get more videos, so subscribe to our channel. You'll get the video notifications whenever a new one comes out, and that's going to be quite often this year. And then finally, if you have a question or a comment, leave them down the below in the comment section. Okay, now for the action plan. The first thing I'd like you to consider doing is heading off to our website where you'll see the Concept Builder section. We have a link to this down below in the description section. There's a Concept Builder by the name of Freefall. Excellent way to solidify your learning. Second, in the Science Reasoning Center at our website, in the Kinematics section, is an activity on Freefall. It's actually called Kinematics. You might want to give it a try. We have a link to that as well. And then finally, if you just simply need a written reference, we have a physics classroom tutorial, sort of like the written version of these videos. Uh, very extensive and very easy to read. Check out lesson five on the topic of free fall. Whatever you do, good luck to you.